This is your life. This, the Daily Express, Fleet Street, London. Out there, the newsroom. Expect at any moment a man whose name is already a legend here for the skill and courage he's shown in his profession. He's a cameraman who's traveled the world and literally risked his life to bring back news pictures to uh, offices like this. He's expected at any moment for a discussion with the picture editor, Ewan Cooper, not unexpected for him at all, to talk about an important new assignment. What he doesn't know is that assignment number one is this. At least we hope it is, and it better be because he's here any second now. Let's get out of sight. Thank you, Struan. Alder Terry. How are you? Famous war photographer, four times winner, photographer of the year award. Terry Fincher, this is your life. Right, so I never thought I'd get caught for this. <laughs> you must be, sir. Thanks for being Thank you. Thanks, Dan. We've got a lot of other pictures back in the studio, so we'll get on more of them. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fincher, this is your life, and it's the story of a Fleet Street messenger boy who rose to become news in his own right as a world-renowned cameraman, four times winner of the Photographers of the Year Award, but best known of all as a photographer of war through pictures like these taken in troubled spots all over the globe. Biafra as two Englishmen face death at the hands of Nigerian soldiers, Vietnam and a black GI weeps for his dead comrades, Vietnam again and a padre administers Holy Communion just behind the firing line. Now those are the kind of pictures this man has often risked his life to take. And there's always a relieved and heartfelt welcome waiting for you when you get home, Terry, from your family, of course. Not at home tonight, as you thought, but here, your wife, June, and with her, your daughters, Jane, Sally, and Lucy. <laughs> June, Terry has a tough Fleet Street reputation. Is that the man that you know? No, not really. He's a very soft man and a wonderful husband and father. Well, now, in more than 20 years of covering action... <laughs> what did you say, Terry? She's more nervous than I am. <laughs> You're right. You've got an eye always for what's happening. But you've had to leave home and family hundreds of times to fly off to danger. Let's look again, for example, at one of those unforgettable pictures we saw a moment ago, the Biafran War, May 1968. You were with the Nigerian army when those two Englishmen were dragged from a car by federal troops and faced with execution. You took your picture because that's your job, but you did far more than that. There's no doubt at all that Terry Finch has saved both our lives. From that picture in 1968, we've flown him from his new home in Ghana, West Africa, John Downing. <laughs> Uh, John, John, sadly, the other Englishman in that picture, William Blakely, has since died. But yes. on that terrible day in Biafra, you believe that you both owed your survival to Terry here? Oh, very definitely. Very definitely. What had happened? Well, we'd been picked up by the federal troops as mercenaries. You I'm, were... an, I'm an engineer, and Bill Blakely is the same. And uh, we were picked up, and roughed up a little, as you've seen. And eventually, after a lot of... Um, Shifting about, we got back to the colonel's headquarters. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. And uh, we were lined up there, and the colonel wasn't terribly interested in what happened to us at all. But Terry came up and, uh, with his camera, said, uh, what's your names and see what I can do. And with his obvious <coughs> charm and personality, went off with the colonel and changed the whole trend of things. The colonel came back and said, let them go. 
and that's it. And I owe my life to you two. Well, well, thank, thank you, John Darling. Yeah, lovely to see you. <laughs> This is your life and it begins in this small cottage at Oving near Aylesbury, Buckinghamshire. And we have a very early picture of you, aged 18 months in fact, <laughs> with your late mum and your brother Michael. And when that picture was taken, nobody could have known that one day that little lad would be a world-class cameraman. Much later on though, when you've reached that status, your brother Michael is delighted to find that you've taken time to take his wedding snaps. That was 26 years ago, Eamon, and he hasn't delivered them yet. Of course, your brother Michael, and with him your dad, Leonard, and your stepmother, Olive. Well, a case of the cobbler's family always being the worst shot, Michael, but you've forgiven him for uh, being a bit late with the snaps. Oh, he was forgiven a long, go, long time ago, party. Eamon. He had a party a couple of weeks ago. Yes, and since then, I've, I've naturally watched Terry, and he's progressed, and all I'm, I can say, I've got the greatest admiration and respect for him. Well, obviously, Leonard, that's something you'd agree with. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> now, back when you were five years old, though, Terry, and we have a picture of you with the family around that time, there it is. Uh, your dad takes a job then as caretaker at the library in Putney, and the family move with him from Bucks to London. You go to school in Putney, but when you're eight years old, the Second World War breaks out. Probably the only time in his life, Michael, that Terry was taken out of the firing line. Well, it, yes, that's true, Eamon. Uh, in uh, 1939, he, we returned to uh, Aylesbury, and to, to well, to Auntie Maggie's, uh, whom Terry has always had the deepest respect for and affection and love, and he spent five happy years there. Well, your Auntie Maggie, Terry, couldn't have guessed that one day that little evacuee of hers would be spending his life flying into danger, because when you leave school at 15, your first job is as an apprentice electrician. But there's not enough excitement there for you, and after only a month, you follow up an advert in the local paper which says, Smart lad wanted by a news picture agency in Fleet Street, the Keystone Press. Your job, messenger boy. And at that stage, Terry, the best qualification, I gather, was the ability to run very fast. Oh, yeah, run, run. Yeah. Your wage at that stage is a pound a week, but for a really smart lad, there's the opportunity to earn a bonus. Now, any lad with a quick eye and a camera to hand could turn part-time photographer and submit his own pictures. <laughs> Your late mum buys you your first camera, your dad rigs up a makeshift dark room for you, and the family effort brings you your first scoop. Now, it must have been a great moment, Terry, when you opened the London evening paper, The Star, to see your first ever picture in print. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, a swan. There it is. Yeah, it was a... How did you come to take it? <laughs> so, uh, I, I remember that. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, but, uh, anyway, uh, I think his name P.C. Wilcox or something like this, anyway. A long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago and a quiet start for a world-renowned cameraman. But it's 1949 now and national service intervenes. Call-up papers arrived for you and a pal of yours in Putney at the same time. You want to join the Navy. Your pal set on the Army, but having decided to stick together, you toss a coin to see which one gets his way. And I won. That's when you really did your nut, didn't you, Terry? That same pal you haven't met for 16 years, not for Milford Essex, Terry Aker. <laughs> Uh, Terry, young Fincher here lost the toss, which meant that he had to apply to join the army with you, but there was another reason why he was hopping mad. Certainly was, Eamon. We went for our medicals together, and I passed, <laughs> I failed the medical. Yeah. <laughs> so not only did he not go in the Navy, but he had to spend two years always, in the army without his old pal. He always had problems with tear ducts in his eyes, and I'm getting them at the moment. That's so, right. <laughs> well, we've got a picture of you, I think, as uh, Private Terry. Yes, there he is, Fincher. But yes, he... He got his own back when he returned from the forces, Terry, didn't he? That's quite right, Amy. I was the date in June at the time, until he, he came back. He used to take her out, you know, at one time. <laughs> yeah. And he's pinched her off me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're Lord's going, forgiven, you're going Terry. grey as well, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I couldn't have listened to a better man, anyway. Oh. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, back from the army, you returned to your job in Fleet Street, not yet a full-time photographer, but as a backroom boy processing other people's pictures. But the most important picture to you around this time is this one, with you on the other side of the camera yes. for once. You're wedding to June on March the 19th, 1954. But not long after that, June, you take your turn in helping Terry on his way when you pose in the back garden for his first shot at a glamour photo. There it is. Were you pleased with it, June? Well, <laughs> yes. Um, he sold it to a magazine and got about five pounds for it. <laughs> well done. In fact, Terry's photography is quite a family concern for the Finchers to this day. Because, Jane, you've already had your own pictures published and now work in Dad's darkroom. Does he give you uh, advice? Yes, he gives me a lot of advice, but sometimes just a bit too much. I have to kick him so that I can get on with my work. <laughs> get him out of the darkroom. <laughs> <laughs> and Sally, when Dad comes home, the whole house knows about it, I gather. Yes, and he's aware it's very quiet, but when he's home, it's like a madhouse. <laughs> and uh, he gets up early in the morning and sings and wakes us up as well. <laughs> What about you? Does he wake you up too, Lucy? Yes, but I'd like to be a photographer when I'm older. I've already got my first camera. From Dad? Yes. Right. Well, Terry, yourself, you're a still a youngster, when after submitting picture after picture, you're promoted to full-time cameraman. You cover every kind of assignment. And in 1956, trouble hits the Middle East. British troops go in to Suez. And Terry Fincher, the young but dedicated photographer, is sent in with them. Now, alongside you, on that first battle mission, someone who immediately notices the youngster's nerve. Since that day, I've always known where to find Terry, in a battle. He's where the action is. We've flown him from Spain tonight, then Daily Express foreign correspondent, now novelist, Derek Lambert. <laughs> Derek, you've had plenty of opportunity to make up your mind about this man's ability in a dangerous situation. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's a, a great photographer. Not a bad photographer, um, but also a very brave man, you know, and uh, wherever bullets were flying, I had to go, regrettably, and follow this gentleman here. Got your tie on. Ha! <laughs> and also a man with an eye for a picture, because I recall one occasion in 1962 when... China attacked India. Do your flies up. And yours. <laughs> <laughs> Again? Anyway, I, I came out and he came out with me and I got some sort of tropical disease. And we go to a little doctor's there in a funny old tent there. And, you know, I'm a bit worried about my health. And I drop my trousers, bend down, wait for the great jab from the hypodermic. And instead of a jab, I'm grimly tense there. I hear a click. And I look around and there's this fool with his camera going <coughs> and uh, he captioned the picture rear guard action. But, uh, <laughs> At least we had a copy. Thank yeah. you, Derek Lambert. Thank you. <laughs> well, now, the year after Suez, the ex-messenger boy's flair and determination is rewarded. A portfolio of your news, sport and features photographs win you the first of those coveted Photographer of the Year awards. But dedicated to picturing the real meaning of war, you decide there's a way of getting to the action faster when the need arises, which is how, in 1965, you find yourself back in uniform again, plus camera, of course, poised one day hundreds of feet over the Surrey countryside, you hear this command. Stand in the door! Jesus. Go! He's not there, is he? A voice you last heard ten years ago, your parachute instructor then, ex-sergeant Fred Loveday. Uh, Fred, Terry here was just a weekend parachutist with the TA, but you remember his first jump well, don't you? I do indeed, I do. It was this particular it. weekend when he turned up with all this para um, camera equipment strapped to your right leg, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, well, I know. Correct, yes. Was, yeah. And it had been a particularly wet week. Yeah. And the old DZ was very, what? you know, sloshy-like. Yeah. And as we were going up, I, you were worried about your camera equipment. I was worried about your landing. <laughs> so I said to you, well, the we, best thing we can do is drop you right in one of the middle of those, and you'll and have you a softer did. one. And you did. And you we did. We did. Yeah. And as we got up, I yeah. said, well, that's just for you, Terry boy. Yeah, you did. You did. And <laughs> as you went down, bugger me, you were right in the middle, weren't you? <laughs> 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 I, I, I would have like well, that. There you are. So by the time I came down, all I saw was a soggy, smelly, 
Little Cherry Pincher. He wasn't fat then either. No, well, that's all yeah, right. But, he got, the, but he, he got the photograph, He Amen. got the photograph got from the photograph. that camera strapped to whatever leg it was. There it is. One unhappy was, photographer heading for a watery end. But six jumps later, you win your wings as a parachutist. Thank you, Fred Lovett. Yeah, Lovett. Okay. <laughs> Terrible thing, you <laughs> And there's plenty more action for you, Terry. Six visits to the battlefields of Vietnam and pictures like these, portraying the horror and futility of war. The people of Saigon under siege. The army in action at Crater, Aden. The front lines in Vietnam. And Vietnam again as soldiers dodge the bullets and pay the price of war. And this picture, Terry, what was the story behind that picture? What? That, that, well, that was uh, Swine Lock, actually. It was Vietnam, the last uh, year ago. And uh, how can I tell a story about Swine Lock? I can't really. Let's have a yeah. look at another picture. That's one we saw earlier, isn't it? That, that was, was in uh, 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 Hawaii, during the Battle of Hawaii, and it was a man who came up to take his uh, communion. And uh, uh, it was a, a Sunday night. And we'd been under fire. We had to about 20 dead people outside, and uh, more than 20, probably nearly 50, in fact. I'm, I'm going to estimate it because on the helicopter we came out, there was, uh, and uh, that was the man who took communion. And uh, well, that was eight years ago, and more very than difficult to tell stories like that. Of course it is, but uh, eight years ago and 6,000 miles away, Terry. But we found that same Marine chaplain giving that communion back in America now, serving with the U.S. Coast Guard Service at Governor's Island, and we've flown him here tonight, Chaplain Eli Takasio. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have, haven't seen each other uh, since that night, Chaplain. Why did you make the journey here tonight to London? Well, I, I, first off, I didn't even know his name, and, uh, but the memory persisted and uh, really persists. Well, I can remember, can I just go before? I can remember, we came out, you remember the, the Catholic Padre? He was who killed. was killed, yeah. and we picked the body up, but it was slightly, and you was trying to, Anyway, you know, you can sit down in the studio like this today and talk about it, but it's not really what it is about. But that was a thing, a part, part of our life anyway, and I just don't believe that you're there. Yes. Well, I think he answered my question. Uh, the reason I came here was to honor a sensitive, humane man who cares, and he cared that night. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you, Chaplain. Yeah, I would like to you as well. I think I should mention uh, what probably, Terry, even you don't know, that uh, that tribute to you has come from one of the most highly decorated chaplains in the U.S. Armed Forces, including two bronze stars for valor. There's very few people like that in life anyway. Terry, Vietnam, Aden, the Congo, Biafra, the trouble spots of the world have been your regular beat for nearly 20 years now. But the photographer of war had his lighter moments. Here, for instance, Franciscan monks in an off-duty moment playing conquerors. And here, a uh, reluctant subject posing for a Fincher portrait. And this one, a desert island where your assignment is to live off the land like a castaway. Except that the island was in the Bahamas that and he had a little girl. company too. You did indeed have company, Terry. Your fellow castaway was none other than international model and film star, Where is Julie she? Edge. Hello, baby. Can I meet you to my lovely other friends? No, later, 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 Terry. I want to ask Julie. <laughs> we spent a week together on that desert. And in fact, you took that picture we've just I seen. I spoke on the phone yesterday. <laughs> did, you, did you suffer great hardships before you struggled back to civilization? Absolutely. Now, he might be a great photographer, but he's, he's not much good as a hunter. <laughs> we were very hungry. <laughs> he was so bad at fishing that I had to help him carry the line out in the sea. And right then, we saw this big shark coming straight past us. Is that true? 
and we were running towards <laughs> the beach, and he beat me. We had about two meters to it. <laughs> but we got only one fish in one week, so that was all we ate. We lost that stomach, didn't we? Well, it's, it's, it's not lost very much. Can I tell you something? The one actress in the world that if ever any man wants to be, and I'll tell you something, is the greatest actress in the world is Julie H. Thank you. Know How about cook? <laughs> yes, I'm a great cook. Yeah. That's it. The most fish. underrated, and I said that. And I ah, there so you've got your picture as well as your fish. <laughs> Thank you, Juliet. <laughs> but it's another island in a different time that brings you back to the danger and risk that are part of your chosen profession. The island this time, the island of Cyprus. The date, July 1974, with the Turkish invasion in full swing. The shells and bullets are an everyday hazard for you, but for an English family on holiday from Beckenham, Kent, trapped in their apartment building, the war is a terrifying nightmare. Until Terry Fincher turned up. Then it was almost like a holiday again. You haven't met them since that time, but I know, Terry, you'll remember Mr. Sandy Miras, his wife, Christine, and their twin daughters, Amanda and Benny. Well, now, these were the kind of scenes that were happening when you were supposed to be on holiday, Sandy. And I'd like you to tell us about that particular ordeal. Well, we were just having a, a quiet family holiday in Cyprus, and uh, suddenly the invasion started, and we looked out over the bay, and there was the Turkish invasion. And we uh, uh, went down to the only place of uh, safety we saw was some garages, uh, under fire at the time, and, and we were a bit scared. And then a Mini drove up, and out came this uh, charming chap, covered with cameras, and started taking photographs. And this was Terry here. And uh, during the four days w w we were there, he, uh, from his experiences, I think, and from his natural personality, calmed us down and, and, and kept us happy and, and, and really, really, when we, you know, I made it. In fact, Amanda and Penny had the situation so well in hand that he helped no you at all. celebrate your, what was it, your 16th birthday? Yes, he even suggested giving us a birthday party in the middle of an bombardment. And we've a picture, the birthday picture that he took of you on that occasion. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Well, can I t tell you one thing? Let me hear from this lovely lady first. He also uh, got everybody singing happy birthday for us. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, darling? Anyway, whatever happened, I'll tell you something, I was so nervous, but uh, whatever happened is it was lovely to be with English people in that, that, that particular time. And was sad in that lovely people. I thought it was in Aden or somewhere. It's, uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, never said <laughs> <seen it. laughs> uh, it's Thank you, the Miras family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm sorry, <laughs> Uh, just before we end your story, Terry, let's go back so to it's all hanging out, Fleet Street for one moment to where it all began for you and where our story started tonight. Over to the picture desk at the Express and picture editor, Struan Cooper. Here you are then, Terry, straight off the drum, tonight's picture, at long last, the bite of bit. Congratulations from all of us here on the Daily Express. Best wishes. We'll see you again soon. That's nice. Thank you, Struan Cooper, and all down there in Fleet Street. Terry, one final picture. Now, this is a tough one. A snap from the family album of world-famous photographer Terry Fincher as a lad in his teens on a day out. Now, you may not remember that picture, but you must have liked it because you gave that picture to someone 26 years ago, and she's kept it ever since. But I have another picture of Terry in my mind's eye, a little boy who came to stay with me at the eight break of war. She went to live in New Zealand, 79 now. She didn't hesitate to fly 13,000 miles to be with you again tonight for the first time in 26 years. Mrs. Margaret Harkin, your Auntie Maggie. <laughs>
not a very real look at life.